9-11, uh, I was preparing along with two other response coordinators uh, an exercise that we were going to have on 9-12. And uh, in preparing the room, uh, we do what coordinators always do. And another coordinator, Doug Weaver, came in and he said, are you watching what's going on in New York? We turned on a TV monitor and saw what was going on at the World Trade Center. And uh, we talked about how odd it seemed on such a beautiful day that an airplane could make the mistake of hitting a building that big. Uh, but it wasn't very long before the next building was hit and we immediately, all the four of us knew, uh, it was time to do what we do. The problem is there was no plan for this. And I got to thinking about Dwight, Dwight Eisenhower uh, talking about plans are useless but planning is essential. And uh, that's what we do in an emergency response. You never get the emergency that you plan for. And, uh, but we all knew what we needed to do. And I find my, found myself within 20 seconds uh, in the operations center with the ops officers and they needed somebody to serve as a monitor uh, to uh, brief the chairman, brief senior NRC managers about what was happening and serve as a master of ceremonies on that conference bridge and I turned out to be me and we were probably on for 45 minutes or an hour and we saw more developments there was talk of the State Department maybe being attacked the Pentagon had been attacked the other World Trade Center one of the towers had collapsed and finally uh, the chairman said I'm coming down to the op center so it was up to uh, Karen Jackson and myself and the other responders there to activate the center asked people to come back in because the, the government had just closed itself. People were evacuating the buildings for, the, for their own safety. But the professionalism of our folks, they all came back in, uh, did their duty uh, without any plans. Uh, we, we found the right thing to do, common sense, good training, good management. Uh, we, we got through it, and I was very proud to be a member of the NRC that day. So I was down on Capitol Hill that morning uh, as part of an NRC training class uh, right across the street from the U.S. Capitol. Uh, at the time, we didn't have any idea what was going on, but you know, later I've thought back about how the, the Flight 93 and where it might have been headed were it not for the heroism of the, the people there and the delays that, that just randomly happened with that flight. It would have been much different, but as it was, uh, there was a lot of confusion there in the building. Uh, we didn't know what was going on. So many rumors of gunfire on the mall, uh, bombs on the metro, uh, just confusion. We weren't sure whether the class was canceled, whether we would have to repay our, our tuition fee for the course uh, if we left and evacuated, but eventually we did. And uh, as we left the building, we could see black smoke coming up uh, in the distance to the south. And, and we figured out where that was coming from. Uh, and as we walked along, one of the members of the class finally went into a building and phoned his wife to uh, let her know he was okay. And uh, as he came out of the building, after watching on TV what had happened, he came up to us and you know explained that these jetliners or these planes were were actually commercial jetliners and uh, just in great agitation. And he. Uh, you know, dropped all his things there on the ground and put, put his hands over his head and, and, you know, crouched all the way down to the ground. And, you know, it was just like how in elementary school during tornado drills uh, we uh, used to practice that. And, and just that image of him uh, has always stayed with me and it just symbolized to me the, the pain and tragedy that everyone felt uh, and the empathy for the victims. and. Uh, the humanity and uh, solidarity that with which everyone came together after those really terrible, terrible events. On 9-11, I was at Reagan National Airport uh, there to board a plane to go to North Carolina A&T's Career Expo for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So I was on my first recruitment trip. Found myself in the airplane and all of a sudden the pilot came over the loudspeaker and he said, I'm sorry, you all have to go back inside of the terminal because a plane just went into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York. And of course, the people in the plane, we were looking at each other, but we got up and did what he said. And it was in my mind as I was walking in, why 
are we having to go back inside of the airport when that happened in New York? But it was obvious. When I got back into the airport, people were running. Uh, a voice over the loudspeaker was saying, evacuate, evacuate. And by the time I got outside of the front of the airport, and I looked to my right toward the Pentagon, and the smoke was just billowing out of the, the, up in the sky. It was terrible. It was terrible. But they said, keep walking, keep walking. So I walked over to uh, Crystal City. There were thousands of people in the airport that day. The news said it was 45,000 people in, in Reagan National. I was able, though, to get a taxi home. As the day went on and I saw all of the, the things that were happening in New York and the other areas of the country, I was just so thankful that I was indeed at home and not out of state having to come back uh, because a lot of my colleagues were in different places. And I was also happy to be an American and to be in a country that is free. But I really, really hope and pray there's nothing like that ever happen again. Well, on 9-11, interesting enough, um, it was the one day in 23-year career here at the NRC that uh, all our management was on a retreat and they were away from the office and they had delegated me as the regional administrator. So I uh, came in, in the morning, did my uh, normal duties as regional administrator, and uh, by about 10 o'clock, things just got crazy here in the region. Um, there was two of us who responded down right where we're sitting now to the IRC, uh, Greg Smith and myself, uh, and we were immediately on the phone with uh, NORAD and the FAA with the um, primary focus on Flight 93, which was actually uh, crossing Pennsylvania uh, quite near Beaver Valley, and uh, there was a concern uh, with Three Mile Island. So um, that was my experience, uh, and from there it just got crazy. Uh, management came back, and, and we staffed up the uh, Incident Response Center here, and, uh, and I think we were staffed for, uh, for at least three months. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Bob Carlson. I'm calling you from Afghanistan and just wanted to call in and uh, tell or uh, relate a little story to you about my experience during 9-11 uh, and then where we are 10 years later. I am currently deployed to Afghanistan in Kabul working at USAID in support of the uh, Afghan mission and uh, primarily focusing on uh, civilian military interactions and also our reconstruction efforts here in country. I remember back uh, on September 11th, 2001, I was also deployed at the time to the Balkans in support of Operation Joint Forge as a military reservist. I remember uh, returning from a staff meeting that day and uh, going over to the mess hall to get something uh, to drink and I happened to look up on our video screen in there and I saw a, uh, it was, uh, I guess at the time I didn't know it was live footage of one of the Twin Towers burning in New York City and uh, I thought it was one of the typical DVDs that they play uh, when folks are in there eating, and I thought maybe it was Bruce Willis or Die Hard or something. And then um, within minutes, uh, the base camp alarms all sounded, and we went into a lockdown mode. And uh, I remember how surreal it felt seeing the events on 9-11 unfold on TV thousands of miles away and then experiencing some of the aftermath firsthand in a remote corner of the world. Uh, here I am again deployed as a reservist, as part of uh, Operation Enduring Freedom here in Afghanistan. So I feel like I've come full circle in this 10 years uh, in hopes of making some small contribution and impact in this global war on terror. Well, during 9-11 when we found out about the strikes, we were uh, at an annual staff meeting in Austin, Texas. At the time I worked for the Texas Department of Health. And someone had came in and said that there was a rumor that a uh, plane had run into one of the towers, that struck one of the towers, and in a few minutes someone had wheeled in um, a television screen with a, with a live feed. And what we saw up on the top right-hand corner of the screen after watching the first tower 
burning for a while was another plane come in and hit the second tower. I thought that it might have been an instant replay of the first one, like a split screen or something, but in a few seconds we and the rest of the world knew that it was not a replay, it was not an accident, and that our country was under attack. And uh, the next day I drove home and four and a half hour drive and the whole four and a half hours the radio was off, it was complete silence and I couldn't help but feel immense anger uh, remembering the people, thousands of people burning to death and some people jumping out of windows screaming in agony because um, they knew they weren't going to survive the fall. And so I got home and I uh, called my recruiter. I was going to try to re-enlist in the military. And um, I didn't know that there was an age limit on that. So I did not get to re-enlist in the military. So I started looking for ways to redirect that anger into something a little more beneficial, a little more productive. And two months later, I joined the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And ever since then, I have been performing nuclear material safety and security inspections out of the Region 4 office in Arlington, Texas. 9-11, I was the team leader in the NRC for our threat assessment program and part of our duties was to maintain liaison with the law enforcement community. So that morning I was getting ready to go downtown with senior managers to meet with senior officials of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. As we came into Washington DC and crossed over near the Washington Monument, I looked over and I saw this big billowing cloud of black smoke. We got up to the FBI building. They opened up the door and being the least senior person in the car, they said, Bobby, why don't you go out and see what's going on? Next thing I knew, they closed the door and drove off. I started walking up to the FBI building. Just as I did that, they evacuated their building. And I fortunately saw a colleague of mine from the FBI, and I started to ask him what was going on. He said, well, we think there may be other planes coming in. And I made the decision at that point, I'm not waiting to see what's going to happen. I know there's something bad going on here. I need to get back to the office. I got on the Metro, actually beat the officials back to NRC, went directly into the operations center, started making phone calls. And that was the beginning of a two and a half month period of working 12 hour shifts, 24 hours a day with our staff, to make sure that our senior officials had the best information possible from the intelligence that we were receiving, which was quite a bit. This was something we trained for, this was something we thought about, but I don't think we really comprehended that it was going to happen. But I think NRC learned a lot from those days. And I think we're much better prepared to deal with something if it does happen again. I was very proud of the way we reacted. And I was proud to be part of it.